So the UC1 has a lot of quirks as far as workflow. Here's how I use it. And it's with a touch panel. Well, I'm running Windows. And if you have a Mac, you have to get some sort of background program that'll host a touch panel. Uh, so Windows is pretty much plug and play. The only thing about the Windows is, is that you have to make it your primary monitor. I have three screens here. So I kind of have this touch panel as another peripheral, really, because you can you can load up SoftSense on there or other plugins and you could do some control or, you know, sort of hands on pseudo hands on automation if you really wanted to. And it is multi touch. The 360 is also multi touch, which is really nice because you can, you know, you can mute things or solo things. I think it only does like five or six points. But in all reality, uh, two points is pretty accurate unless you've got good control of your fingers. I have a list here. The one thing is there's no power switch. If you look over here, right down here, I have an inline power switch. It's a 2.5 millimeter connection. Uh, you can get them in 2.2, which is the wrong type, obviously. But 2.5 is going to be what you need. And you can get those on Amazon uh, for super cheap. I mean, like $10 for three of them. The other thing is selecting channels. Let's say you have you have a ton of channels, like, you know, 60. I can scroll through here. So if you see you see my, my mouse here, I don't really need to use the mouse. I can just touch zoom, right? And what the nice thing about the zoom is, is that even if you didn't have the UC1, you can still use 360 without the UC1, which is pretty nice. And as you can see, you just, you know, you scroll. And if you really needed to, if you had more channels, you just scroll this way. Um, but for now, I'm just going to show you these five channels I have. And you can see the names at the bottom right here, uh, which is right here. You can see all the names. What I like the most about this is that I can, let's say I do have a bunch of channels, right? I could go to this, the scroll wheel and select a channel, but I'd have to either look at the screen uh, to scroll through the channel that I want or look at the display and try to remember what I named it and then just scroll to it. But if I could look down here and then just hit, hit a channel, right? And just click on a channel, it automatically selects um, the UC1 channel. And then I can, I can go ahead and, as you can see there, I, I, can, I can move this guy or whichever, really. I can, I can do the high pass or low pass. So if I have to just do this, right, and just go like that, Sometimes that's sometimes it's a little faster. Um, and as you can see, it's also selecting each channel I'm selecting or I'm touching the knob from. So any knob I touch, it's gonna it's gonna select the channel. So I like that about it. The other thing is multi-touch. So I can use two fingers here and hit the solos or hit the cuts or turn any kind of parameter. And uh, if I wanted to, I could do all three of these if I can hold on to them. There you go. So like I said, three, three is a little bit tough because you got to control both or you got to control all three of your fingers. But let's say I go over here. I'm controlling all four of these guys. Well, it's a little it's a little tougher than than you would think. I'm also not directly on it in, in the front of it, but you can. Yeah, tr trust me, you can. You can you can do up to 5. That's another thing, multi-touch and like I said, um, like Cherry Audio will do like 10 touch. Um, not every plugin will do multi touch. Um, I believe uh, the Plugin Alliance stuff doesn't do multi touch. Um, I'm pretty sure Softube will do multi touch.
how I like using these compressors is usually on like one to five, right? Just dial them down to one to five or in that range. Keep them on like the RMS detection, go through them all, kind of bring up the RMS level in the signal just one at a time. So let's say, you know, let's say it's all the way down, right? These are all the way down. And instead of going channel to channel, and I'm sure you could sit there and scroll the channel as you turn the knob, but I can just do this, right? I can go, okay, and then let it start flickering because as soon as you get over like 3 dB, it's, it starts to add too much transient. So I can just scroll through here. There you go. And then get a little more. Come on, where are you at? There you go, starting to blink. Starting to blink. There you go. Okay, so that's kind of what I like doing as far as getting uh, the RMS level up in the signal a little bit, just so it's a little louder. Um, so that could be an easy way to just go through and just do stuff you do all the time, like, you know, high pass filter or low pass filter. And then, like I said, if you got if you got a ton of channels, then you can see them right here and you can you can just kind of click on them and then it'll select it instead of scrolling through. So now as far as as far as controlling your DAW, uh, what I end up doing, I have my controller here so I could I could literally just hit the stop and play button right here. And I can just play it again and stop it. And then if I need to scroll the timeline, I can scroll here. So that to me helps me out as far as moving the timeline and starting and stopping. If I have not selected the monitor that has the DAW on it. So that's the quirk is that. I mean, it's it's kind of annoying sometimes because sometimes you'll forget, but it's easy enough to just hit start or stop over here. And then if you need to, you know, scroll. I mean, that's about it. I mean, the, the main topics here are being able to do multi-touch on the touch panel for more than just 360. For the power switch, easily selecting channels, just by clicking on one of the knobs, instead of scrolling, selecting my DAW either through the taskbar or um, navigating back with my controller. And that's, that's basically it. Thanks for watching.